you all hear me fine back there? Uh, OK, here, my slides are coming up. Thank you. Can you see the slides? That's all we're going to just That's it. That's the conclusion. I can go home. <laughs> On spoiler alert, the kids are important. Kids are precious. Kids are twice as important as you ever knew before. And tell your neighbors about it. And tell the grumpy people about it who don't think that we can afford these kids. Uh, I specialize in demographic narrative, how people use the demographics to tell political stories. And to, to make that point, I'm going to compare uh, the old stories that are common in, in California. The new one's not really recognized. My demographer colleagues and myself always joke about this, that when we look at the data, you know, we're supposed to be the experts on things, but when we look at the data, we're surprised at things we find. And so I think most people don't know. And I, and I generally believe most people think that the new demographics are what was new literally 20 years ago. They're really that far behind. They just don't know. So let's take a look here. The, part of the problem is all the different ways that demographics can change. And so people get really kind of confused by all these things. And it depends on where the attention is going. Where is, where is the policy attention? Is it about racial change? Is it about immigration? Or maybe it's about aging? You know, and they're, they are dazzled by all these facts. They don't know where to look. What's the most important thing? But you know what the most important thing is. I know you do. And it's really the things we take for granted. It's about the kids, children born and raised, totally taken for granted. But I got the numbers. I'll show you the old story. We can look at the new story. But first, the narrative here. Growth is overwhelming us. Children are too numerous. You know, they're a burden on the taxpayers. And we don't need other people's kids. And we just can't afford it. I'm sorry. There's too many. That's the story. And uh, it's slowly changing now. I see evidence of it changing. But that's in the backs of the minds of the older voters in particular, because they remember a time 30 years ago when maybe there were a lot of kids. My parents actually were like that. They created me. They created the baby boom. And we really swamped the schools. Uh, we swamped everything. <laughs> it's not like that anymore. Here's the growth in California just uh, since uh, 1940 going through 2060. The dash line is what the state demographers in the Department of Finance thought the growth was going to be in 2007. This is like looking back from 10 years ago. They saw the, data dash, the, the dotted line going through the ceiling there. And the green line is the more current projection. It's a slowdown. How big a slowdown? Well, what year does California reach 50 million? The old expectation, 2032. The new expectation, 2055. 23 years later. It's a whole generation later. It's going to hit 50 million. You want to see Santa Clara, I bet. Here it is. When does it reach 2.5 million? It slowed down only a little bit. From 2041, it was the expectation, now it's 2044. Because this is the engine room of the California economy. It's not going to slow down that much. But you are slowing down also here. But the point being is that we thought we had a lot of growth. We don't have as much as we thought. And underneath that, all the components of growth have also changed. So let me start with racial change, <clears throat> which I, uh, it, I approach at first. Because most people think, that's, when I say demographics, they think that's it. It's about race. Well, race gets, it gets pretty politicized. And California is way ahead of the curve. I've been working in Washington, DC, and just shocked at what they think there. And I said, well, we've been there. We did this in the 90s. We're way ahead, but they're, they're still figuring things out. So there's one concern is the decline in the white population in the US. And basically, uh, it's been declining steadily and will decline. That's the voters declining. Here's the total population. And then here's children. And right now, the majority of children nationwide are children of color, we think. We're just right at the crossover point right now. But that really ha has affected voters badly. They, they reacted against this idea. They don't want to go extinct, quote unquote. These are, these are, these are front page stories in the New York Times. It affects the whole nation. Um, and it's wrong. It's not the way to think about it. We know better in California. We've been there. We are doing it successfully. Here's the current uh, population makeup, racial makeup, since 2010 to 2060. And there's, we're all minorities in California. There's nobody who's a majority. And the Latino population we thought was going to go over 50%, and it's kind of leveling off more. 
Whites, we thought were going to go down further, but they're kind of leveling off more by projection. And what it means is that it's a multi-ethnic world. All elections require multiple ethnic coalitions. There's, you know, it's not one sided the way you hear about it in the press. So there's a national press story, and then there's normal California. And uh, they, they haven't caught up. They're, they're li literally, they're 40 years behind us. So let me move on to things that are more interesting and more important that are really are changing and are dramatic and have big consequences. Uh, migration or homegrown? Migration is the idea that people move to California because this is the promised land. This is the, this is the place of opportunity. And people have been coming here forever. So ever since the gold rush, people have come here to California. Um, but it's, it's changing. First, I'm going to show you the percent foreign born. These are all the big counties in California. Here, here's the, here's the uh, state. Here's Santa Clara. This is the percent foreign born. The gray bar is the foreign born percent in 2000. And the red portion is the change in that in that percent foreign born since 2000. And so you see Santa Clara is bulging outward there. Uh, Los Angeles actually is kind of dropping a little bit. Uh, and then at the top up there, you have other uh, counties that don't have very many foreign born at all. But that's taken a lot of attention. But foreign born growth has really slowed down in the uh, state. You see it's barely moved uh, in California as a whole since 2000, barely budged. That's not what the action is. The action is somewhere else that everybody's been igno ignoring because they've been worried about race or worried about immigration. It's this. It's the percent California born. California born is something I learned when I was in Texas. I did it for several years. I learned to be God, be next to God, to be saintly next to God is to be native Texan. <laughs> and if you were from Michigan or somewhere else, you didn't count worse squat. <laughs> so they drew the line there. And California's never had that because everybody in California came from somewhere else. They came from other states. They came from other nations. The Chinese came to Gold Mountain. They came from Argentina. They came all over the world, came to California. And we, we, we never had a majority that were California born until just after, just right around 2000, when we just crossed that line for the first time. And nobody even thought it was important. No one noticed it until my research group discovered it six years later that it had happened. And then we realized, holy cow, this is a really big deal. This is a big deal. We're, we're, we're like, growth is slowing down, migration is slowing down. So more and more of our kids are native, native California kids. And it doesn't matter what ethnicity they are. They're all native Californians. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's a big deal. Let me show you by age group to show you just how big a deal it is. This is for all of California. The bottom bar here is for the total population. That's the 54% uh, California born in total. The foreign born is on the right. And then in between is the people from other states. Show of hands here. How many people were born in other states? Well, a lot of you. Me too. I'm from Florida. Uh, a lot of people come from other states. And you can be good people coming from other states. It's OK. <laughs> uh, my kids are born here. They're California born. Um, but the thing is, what about kids? What percent are born in California, of all the kids in California? It's the great majority. They're, they're native Californians. And what's more interesting to me is the key age group I like to harp on is age 25, 34. These are the most important people in, 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 the, in the state, in the nation. Those are the people who do everything. 25, 34, they are the new workers, the new taxpayers, the new parents, the new voters, the new home buyers, and the people who have babies, by the way, all at the same time. <laughs> Whoa, it is a crunch. So we'll come back to that. Uh, and the majority of them currently, already today, are California born. And the projection is by 2030, it'll be substantially higher. What does it mean if those new workers are California born? It means they pretty much all went to California schools. We're going to get what we pay for. <laughs> we used to import really smart people. I saw your hands go up. We used to import really smart people from other states. And you know, get them get their free education elsewhere and bring it here. And now we're more and more reliant on our homegrown. It's it's a political threshold that's been crossed here, not heralded, because people don't know what to do about it. It means we have to do what? We have to pony up more. Well, we'll get to that. 
Okay, so then for older people, it's less and less. And at the oldest ages, most of the people came from other states. Uh, so that's for California. I'll just show you Santa Clara County. I'm curious about that, too, I'm sure. Uh, Santa Clara is a little less on the homegrown, but same dynamic here. Oh, there are all the kids. Kids are homegrown Californians. There they are. Uh, fewer of the workers, because you ha do have a lot of uh, migration, a lot of immigration coming in because of Silicon Valley, obviously. It's, uh, it's, it's the world's best employment attractor. Uh, uh, but even then, it's heavily uh, uh, California-born. Uh, Los Angeles, just for comparison, Orange County, I'm, I'm going to compare these counties later, but uh, there they are. So what's the problem with changing demographics? I think it's about the kids now. And we haven't realized that things have shifted with the kids. So I want to look at this. Too many kids? We can't afford it? Uh, everything's reversed. It's total reversal. We now are top heavy with too few children. And I can show you, that. remember, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the demographer. I got the numbers. I presented this graph here. I think this at the, at the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the, the National, I think it was the Republican Governors Association. And so I just had to show the facts. I couldn't make any comments about it. But this is like percent growth of adults by state. Here's the US and then, and then all the states. Percent increase of adults over 18. And then the percent change in children. A lot of states are just totally hemorrhaging children. They're, just, they're, not at, they're losing badly. The US as a whole, children grew by less than 2% over this entire period, 15 years. Well, the total population went up, or adults went up 18%, nine times more. How about California? We're negative there. California actually had less uh, lost children. And so it's like children aren't keeping up with the rest of the population. What does that mean? Well, Kathleen liked this graph here. This is for the US, because it shows what the story used to be in 1970. This is a population pyramid, the classic idea you have a few old people and you have a whole lot of young people at the bottom. I'm just going to show you, on the left side, I'm going to show you 1970. On the right side, I'll show you 2030. You can compare them side by side. But here the deal is I've circled a couple of ages, like 65, 69. It's not, not important. It's just a random age group, 65, 69. That's when the five years when people become eligible for Medicare and they retire and do all these things that need support by other people. And then meanwhile, you have young, young kids there. Uh, here's 10 to 14. And uh, you just took a random age group. And you see there's like three times as many of them as there are the old people. You want to see 2030? This is the Census Bureau's projections. Census Bureau's projections. And so the green cohorts are the baby boomers are now older. You know, I, I joke with my economist colleagues, they don't like the joke, but they can't deny it, that, <laughs> that demographers are smarter than economists. E economics is the most important thing, I believe it. You just can't predict anything with it. They don't know interest rates uh, three months ahead, otherwise I would have refied my mortgage earlier. They don't, they don't know stock market, they don't know incomes, they don't know anything, they can't predict ahead of time. But demographers know that in 10 years' time, everybody in this room is going to be 10 years older. <laughs> it's a small fact, but it's useful in political debates. Because nobody can, nobody can say, oh, well, no, you did it wrong. Wrong formula. What formula? OK, so but baby boomers, they got older. And so they're up there at 2030 now. Uh, millennials are the cohorts in the middle there. But the point being is that this key age group here is now the same size as these old people up here. They're exactly the same size. So it's, it's, uh, it's top heavy. How top heavy? Well, uh, first let me go back and let's look at the babies. How many babies are there? How do, you know, how do I know these numbers? Well, we actually, in our democracy, it's a free country. We don't record any, really, we don't track anybody. All we know is the day you were born and the day you died. In between, we really don't know. You have driver's licenses, but you don't change your addresses reliably and things, you know. But really, so we know, we know the baby, babies really well. So here's the, here's the number of babies born in California. I, since, since people's attitudes are 20 years out of date, I, I do believe that political cultures are formed based on old patterns. And people have these received wisdom ideas. They don't know where it came from, but they just know these kids are a problem. Because you know the way they're going, at this rate, they're going to totally take over. You know, we can't afford this. They're swamping us. Look at that, look at that trend there. 
And, and, and they, you know, I'm also an urban planner as well as a demographer, so I know everybody says this at every city council meeting. Well, at this rate, we're all gonna be, yeah. You know, they just extrapolate. Uh, well, so that looked bad. Here's the actual data. And here's the projection. It's not, uh, and we're, we're it, it's way different. Here we're fearing the, the burden before, and now we're fearing the shortage of, of kids. Uh, California is gonna grow 48% over this time period here, and the births fell by 24% in the same time period. It's, not, it's all out of whack. So not nearly enough babies born. Uh, here it is for Santa Clara County. It's a very similar dynamic, although the projections show uh, the hopeful increase coming later in the last, like after 2025. I mean, it's these, these projections, they change them every year. So it's very hard to know about, especially babies being born. Uh, it's been fooling us all. We thought uh, things would recover more than they have. Uh, so Santa Clara's population is up 49%, but the births are down 16%. Um, Here's, actually, I'm just gonna show this quickly because this is in the paper this week or this month, and uh, you know, I, I got dragged into some quotes, but here's the number of births. And this, this run up in babies was being born up to the peak of the, right before the Great Recession. It went up, and then there's a recession, so of course the babies go down, right? And then there's recovery, stock market recovered within a year, and uh, other things, and employment's been slower, income's been even slower, and, and babies recovered a little bit. See that little recovery there? Did I hit it? <laughs> it's really, okay, hold on, stop jiggling. Uh, and then it's taking a dive again. Why? Why a dive? I mean, employment is great, income is great, everything's great. Why is it diving? We, we don't know. Nobody knows, but I, so I, I, I think it's a, it's a sign, a barometer of despair. People make more babies when they're optimistic about the future when they're not worried about how they're gonna get a house to live in, when they're not worried about the state of the world economy or the global politics or whatever, but it's not going good. And so that's going down more, so we don't know what's gonna happen next. But I'll just point out, why is it a problem, just briefly? All these things. You know, basically these kids are gonna grow up to be the future, all these things, and it has huge social benefits. And it, it's also a problem because it reflects this, these hurdles that are faced by young women, which, it really requires them to do everything, build a career, build a family, uh, all these things, complete their education, all in this little narrow little time period, which puts the crunch on. And so naturally, the babies get put off, put off, put off, put off until it's too late. Um, but that's sort of what's happening. So it's, it's a problem that way. So it's a top heavy, a top heavy society. So it's not just about the babies though, it's about all the rest of us who are just marching along and getting older. And so how does that look? So, Here's the growth in California in the last 20 years and now through the next 20 years by age group. This is the increase, last 20 years, <coughs> boom. And there you have, these are actually the golden period here. The people in the middle, they're the green cohorts, you know, those are, those are my people, the baby boomers. <laughs> by painting them green because they're also in the prime earning years, prime tax paying years, these are the, the, the big executive houses, they're buying, this is the prime years. And then behind them, the red is the millennials that are the children of the baby boomers, really. But you see in the early 20s, there was, we were losing people and young people. We were, we were losing. Uh, and then no growth among old people at all. Very little growth. Okay, here's the next 20 years. You, you know what's coming. Okay, so what happened to the good guys? The good guys are now the bad guys. They crossed that age 65 line, same people. And we, they have ill effects because they, they deserve everything they're gonna get. I deserve everything I'm gonna get but we just don't have any growth back in here uh, to really uh, keep it going. So that's California, the same pattern for, here it is for Santa Clara, it's everywhere. The baby boomers are everywhere, it's the same dynamics, and we're just asleep with the switch, not realizing, you know, we, we, what about these, we're losing kids here, okay? This is the projection. Losing all these young kids, and that's gonna be the workers there, and. We're, we, we can't afford to, be, to, well, we can't make more babies that weren't born. What could we do, though? So here's what I think. It's gonna be a lot more old people. Uh, anybody got a problem with that? <laughs> and uh, we just can't have too many more uh, older people than we have these young people. We need a certain ratio. And uh, so how many is too many, and what are you gonna do about it? Well, we can't make more babies, I don't believe. 
but we could sure invest more in the kids that we have. Let's take a look at how bad it might be, though. This is the senior ratio, I call it, which is the number of people 65 and older divided by working age, per, per 100 working age. It was pretty constant for a long time uh, in the US, and it's skyrocketing because of the first baby boomer crossed uh, age 65 in 2011. Born in 1946, 2011, so it ticks off like a skyrocket. Totally predictable, and it goes up. Uh, it's worse in California. These are just some states. It's in every state. Here's California. I picked a few you know, random counties. For example, well, there's Santa Clara is on the bottom there. Really young. Look how young it was, 1980, 1990. Really low ratio seniors for working age. Here's San Mateo. Look how old it is. San Mateo, you know. <laughs> A little older, but that regardless, whoever they are, in Orange County is like, like, San, like uh, Santa Clara, also a bedroom, formerly a bedroom suburb, lots of families with kids, formerly. And now look at San, you know, Orange County goes really, it goes up to like 55, 60 uh, seniors per 100 working age. It's like, uh, it's, a, it's extraordinary, it's doubling, more than doubling. And that ratio determines everything in our government finances. At, at the federal level, it's all about the old people. At the state level, here's, you guys got a bad deal here. The, the way they worked it out was a division of labor. The, the, the states and, and the counties are in charge of all the kids. And the feds are in charge of all the old people. Yeah, that's the deal. And so most of the federal budget goes to uh, old people's programs, a little bit for kids. And half the state budget goes to, to, to children, as it needs to. Uh, so, uh, and as you, this ratio shifts here, it's going to put more and more pressure on funding old people's services because they vote also. By the way, it's a structural problem in democracy. By the way, those kids, they don't vote. Some of their parents don't vote either. So if they're underrepresented, and the old people vote a lot. They vote at twice the rate. They turn out at twice the rate of young adults. Why is that? Well, because they got lots of time on their hands. <laughs> And they're not being crunched by having to get to work or, or pick up the kids from daycare. Da, 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 da. So they have a lot more time. So I mean, they, in a democracy, you want everybody to vote. So I'm not saying vote, old people should vote more or vote less. But young people, really need to, we need to help them vote more. But the, point, the problem being is this is just a natural condition here. And there's nothing we can do about it. But we can respond to it in better ways. So here's the implication I draw from this, uh, this aging. That a child born in 2015 or later will become uh, working age in, uh, in their working age in 2040. And at that time, the senior ratio would this be this much higher. And so every kid is going to be twice as, uh, twice as important because they're so scarce. And, and we need them so much because of the senior ratio. Twice as important. And you know it's probably a little more than twice, but just call it twice when you talk to your neighbors. Twice is good enough. So all evidence shows that, that to get them prepared, we have to, I think we have to put twice as much effort into it to getting them ready. So because everybody who's better educated and better health care uh, at a young age or uh, you know, learns to read at an earlier age will do better in school and it'll pay back our investments. You know, there's lots of experiments on this. And it's hard to summarize them all, but roughly six to one. Some people promise 12 to one payback. Some are only four to one payback. Whatever it is, you get all your money back plus a lot more except you don't get it back today. You get it back when the kid grows up, which is why I made that joke earlier about why I'm so much smarter than an economist. Because you do know the kids are going to grow up. It's guaranteed. You'll get the money back. It's not like we're speculating. The kid's going to grow up. And you want them to grow up well-educated when he comes knocking on your door to offer you to buy your house? By the way, a Latino kid age 35, growing up to age 35, with a college degree, pays 70% higher prices than with a high school degree. So who do I want knocking on my door? I want the, the, the kid I invested in, who's going to be able to pay me the million dollars I hope my home will still be worth. <laughs> so how are we doing? Uh, just I may have to rush through this a little bit on the education spending, but I just got some really cool graphs. I updated them. You know, it, it has changed. California's improved, but not enough. But I'll show you. So here we go. This is the K through 12 uh, spending uh, per pupil by state in 2012. There's, there's California. Here's the US average. We, our, our payments were 13% below the national average. 
But you know, we always heard about California is like, you know, as bad as Mississippi, but we're not at the bottom. We're not, where's Mississippi? Okay, there it is. So we're not, we're not at the bottom. Did I touch it again? I did not touch it. I think it gets, I breathe on it. I didn't get so close to it. Uh, that's, there's Mississippi. But you know, it depends on how much money you have to spend. Mississippi's a poor state, so, oh, here's our median income. And, and California is above average, 13% above average. And, well, where's Mississippi? Oh, it's at the bottom, very bottom. So Mississippi can't really afford to do any better. We, we could, I guess. That's 2012. Here's 2017, the very latest data available. This got issued like two weeks ago. Uh, and so uh, California, according to those data, is really close now to the national average. We've really come up in, in, in our 32% uh, in our spending per pupil. These are uh, not adjusted for inflation, just no nominal dollars. 32% uh, increase, the US increase is 15%, so we, we're, we're catching up. How about our income? Oh, there, oh, there's Mississippi, by the way. <laughs> uh, so uh, on, on income, uh, we're up like 19%. We're way up on income. So our incomes have moved up, and we only got up just to average. We're, Mississippi's still, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a, you know, it, it, they, they kind of, they're at the bottom. And so let me show you when I combine them together in, in a scatter plot. Uh, here it is when you do them together. And so here it is, income along the horizontal axis. And the more income you have, the more states spend. On, uh, on per pupil. And where's Mississippi? It's right on the line where it should be. The very bottom, that's where it should be. It's a poor state and it's spending about what you could expect. We're below the line. The yellow dot, that's us. We're off the line. That's 2012, 2017, how, how much better are we? Well, we moved up, but everybody else moved up and uh, we're, we're closer to the line, but we're still 12,000. $1,200 or something short. I'm not sure what, we have to be up at fourteen five, and we're at twelve five, two thousand dollars $2,000, something. That's just a rough way to look at it, but you can sort of see we're, we're not really at average. Uh, so here's my conclusion now, uh, just to wrap it all up. You know, we need all hands on deck. No dropouts are acceptable. I mean, really, we just can't really handle this. We need, you know, really childhood interventions. And it's not just a nice thing to do. It's not just for the kids. It's an economic boost for really both the younger and older Californians alike. Everybody can, will benefit from this. It's not just the kids. Here's my theory, which basically says there's a life cycle and that people rotate through the life cycle. And the people uh, here who are the prime taxpayers get a little grumpy because they're spending all this money, a lot more than they're getting back. But guess what? They're going to get huge benefits when they get up to here. And they had benefits when they were young earlier. They don't have student loan debt the way these kids, young adults do today. So this, uh, these people, it's their role in life is to be paying a lot. It's just, and uh, one sermon I always have, you should thank them. Don't just take it. Say, you know, that's, acknowledge it. You know, that's the highest tax bracket by age. And thank you. We appreciate your contribution because that's really valuable. We need it for the kids here because they will grow up then and they can then support you when you get to get your benefits over here. We all take turns. It's we're all in it together. So the conclusion is real simple. We totally need other people's kids. <laughs> and we need them to grow into their fullest capabilities possible. And so this is my report that came out as a national report. Not didn't have all the stuff we have here in California, but I thank you. I know, Dr. Myers, we rushed you, and I apologize for that. But I'm sure we've got people with questions. And we have little cards. If anybody can write down their question, that would be great. So this presentation makes the assumption that we should invest in children so that they can take care of older people. What are your thoughts on education as a human right? And there is a lot of research to support that birth rates decreasing is overall better for the planet from a social sustaining, what are your thoughts? That's an excellent question. I'm still on. Oh, you got yours. That's an excellent question. It has two questions, really. Yeah. Take the last one for, first about uh, the, the global population growth and reducing birth rates. 
I'm all for lower birth rates. We can put much more care into our kids if we have fewer kids. The problem is that we have so many older people. You have to deal with that now. That's going to be the big hurdle for the next 20, 30 years. And then we can, then we won't worry about low birth rates anymore. But we have to deal with that. And the only way we can deal with that is by buffing up our kids so they can each support more load. They have to support twice the load. And so we're not, I'm not advocating for more kids. I'm just saying if you have so few kids and you have so many old people, you've got to make your younger generation stronger. You can't have anybody dropping out of school. You can't be neglecting kids the way you were before when you had so many extra kids you could waste them. We can't waste anybody. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I mean by that, on the, on the, about population growth. Now, the first one is about right, education is a right. Uh, that's a, a political decision on my point, is to avoid talking about rights. Rights gets very contentious. Uh, I, I believe that uh, education and health are rights for everybody. Uh, I don't want to argue that with uh, grumpy uh, people in, in the electorate. I really just show them the facts, which they should believe in. And I want them to realize it's for their own good, grumpy as they are, that they help these kids. And I think that's the easiest path to getting there. And the rights, I would not debate that. I, I won't deny it. But I'd rather take on the basic facts, what's in it for the old folks. If you want them, they're the majority of the voters. If you don't sell it to them, it doesn't matter how many rights I think I have or my kid has. We really need to, uh, we all should help kids in all different ways. And, I, and this argument is totally designed to convince older folks why it's in their best interest to, to help young. We are going crazy with our immigration debate. Your numbers show we should back off and welcome in immigrants. Agree? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my strategy is to show what the problem is and let people figure out what the solution might be. So uh, the solution might be, uh, on, you know, well, uh, you know, the easiest case is the, um, the, uh, the dreamers, the, the, the kids who came here at a very young age and uh, through no fault of their own, we educated them, and now we want to send them back? Are you nuts? <laughs> I think we have a problem of a shortage, and why don't we keep the ones we already educated? That's the easiest case. And then additional immigrants, we are bringing other immigrants in. We, we don't have enough workers right now. We have to. We're at the high end here and the low end, um, Salinas. We have to. Ag workers and tech workers. We have to. We already are. There's a lot of rhetoric in the press. I saw some of my students. It shocked me. I have these uh, freshman students. And they were, I asked them for feedback on, uh, about what they had learned in the course. And they were amazed at what they heard about immigration because they never heard any of that in the press. They thought, and everything they heard in the press was in the last two years, because they're, they're kids. They had never paid attention before. And all they know in the last two years is totally distorted from obvious reasons. So uh, that really was, was a shocker. Um, I think that we did, you know, immigrants have huge benefits, and uh, I'll, I'll let people figure that out. That once, you notice there's no discussion about this, this age imbalance, is there? Did you hear that on, on the campaign trail anywhere? <coughs> We're not talking about it, are they? Because if you, once you talk about it it, it, it leads to certain solutions. And the people who are, are setting the tone on the conversation are avoiding this one like crazy. Because it does not go in their direction. And I just point out that other people are following along. I won't call them stooges, but they're following along behind the story that's being set by the people who are tweeting out the early news reports. And they don't realize that be, their whole perspective is being shaped. Um, is this imbalance temporary? What about when baby boomers die off? Not going to happen. <laughs> uh, in, in 2030, there are still going to be 56 million baby boomers still kicking. Census Bureau projection, 56 million. So maybe by 2080, we'll all be gone. Uh, yeah, then what happens then? You know, we can't get there. We have to get past 2020 and 2030. And you don't think that's a problem? We couldn't get past 2016. We're in a, we're in a very contentious period right now, uh, partly because of the Great Recession, but partly because of the, the demographic changes that are going on. We have to get, to, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a friendly way, through 2030. And how are we going to do that? that that's, a, that's a hurdle. I don't care about nine, 2080. I mean, it's just, we can't, we can't get to 2080 if we don't go to 2030 first. And we got problems getting there. 
Thank you, Dr. Dow. I want to just check. Um, I'm going to give the supervisors a privilege if they'd like to ask a question. I'm going to ask Susan first, if you're OK. You got what you? Yeah. Cindy, do you have? So I, I have a very broad question. As you think about the investments made in children relative to how, how we explain the finance, you know, your little grid, how do we explain that in even more monetary terms to seniors? Um, which grid? You mean the, the, I'm sorry, you showed that circle. Oh, that of, circle. Yeah, like, have, do you have another demographic that literally says this is what gets produced and moves around that food chain for the, the older folks? Because one of the challenges, I think, is with this argument, is it's not argument, but framework, is that it's still a little amorphous because yeah. people really can't quantify it. Yeah, well, we, we can quantify it. Uh, it, it we, we can quantify it at snapshots in time and then move it through time. But the problem is that people who don't like the story won't believe the, the numbers. So I, I, I kind of stay away from the economic facts because nobody's going to believe it. But they believe the aging facts. They, they know it in their own families. You can't deny it. And so the principles they believe, they know that you know, the kids are struggling, they know this and that. But once you go to the hard numbers, the hard numbers don't actually win the argument. The story wins the argument. They have to believe that people are getting older. There's a lot of older people that deserve everything. I deserve what I'm going to get. And we have a lot of young people who are struggling. They have to believe, and there's not enough of them. They have to understand that number, just that relationship, and then everything else falls into line. But I, but I, but I, 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 I can show you some quantifications. Okay. We're working on more right now. Thank you, Dr. Myers. Thank you. All right. All right. My pleasure. So, um,